Hey YouTube, what's up? Today I'm bringing you another knife video on the table before your beautiful eyes. It's a knife from Boker, specifically the Boker Plus line. A collaboration with Boris Manasharov, a ex-Israeli military, I believe. So he's uh, got quite a knack, I guess, for designing knives, and I guess he specifically designed this knife for a certain purpose. But we'll go over that maybe a little later or in another video. Specifically, we're going to focus on the specs of this knife. So we have a liner lock flipper with fairly well textured G10 handle scales and a D2 blade. So you'll notice on the show side, it's fairly sterile except for a Boker Plus logo on there. And on the opposite side, Boris's uh, logo there as well. So you'll notice on the inside there that the uh, liner lock is fairly recessed. So takes a little getting used to if you're used to a uh, normal frame lock. It's a little, well, it's got jimping on the inside there, so that helps for extra track or extra grip there, sorry. It's nice, actually. Once I've gotten used to it, it's pretty good. So you'll notice also on the side of the blade here, there's quite a few scratches. This is a work knife. Specifically, I work in a factory, like I said in a previous video, and I'm practicing sharpening. I don't have the greatest sharp sharpening setup right now, so yeah. That's what happens. But I'm learning and it's better than doing it on a ZT or something triple the price of this knife. Oh yeah, well, well while we're there, I'll just let you know this knife is, I believe, just under $100 Canadian. So, yeah, good deal. You can pick this knife up probably about, yeah, $80 Canadian. In the U.S., probably about $45, $50, bucks, depending on whether you're going to somebody off the internet aftermarket kind of thing or you're going to your local dealer anyways let's move on to some specs of this knife here like i say it is a liner lock flipper with g10 handle scales and a d2 stonewash finish blade the blade length comes in 3.5 inches with an overall length of eight and one quarter inches weighs in at 5.6 ounces running on a ball bearing system it is right side tip up carry I believe you can switch the pocket clip over to be left side tip up carry only but I yeah I haven't really messed with that but I'll show you on the knife here if you uh, take that screw out you can slide the pocket clip right down into there so there you go if you're a lefty you got an ambidextrous knife and I'm gonna just say this now I've seen like $500 knives and whatever like I've seen way more expensive knives than this, and they don't even have that option. So that's really nice. That's a good feature from Boker. Another nice feature, for me anyways, is it's got an oversized lanyard hole, because I like to be a little bit dramatic with that. I like schmuckatelli beads and paracord. I'm all about that. Very heavily jimped backspacer here. It's made of stainless steel, so it adds quite a bit of weight to it. You've got your... Um, Skull crusher glass breaker combo, I guess. I wouldn't recommend using it for either, but hey, it's there. You'll notice single-sided torque pivot screw, so that shouldn't free spin in there. I haven't had an issue with it. I've really only cleaned it once. Came apart pretty well. I really dig the pocket clip on this. It is a nice pocket clip. I wish it wasn't uh, chrome because it shows scratches fairly well, but whatever. That's just a nitpicky of mine. It's got fairly good texture on the scales there. Nice and grippy even when it's wet. So jumping up here if you want to do, you know, if you got a little thumb ramp on the, or jumping on the thumb ramp here if you want, you know, a little extra control over the knife. A little bit of a sharpening troil there, so that's nice. Like I said, way more expensive knives I've seen that don't have that. This is a multi-opening uh, function knife. And by that I mean it has multiple ways to open it. So you've got your standard flipper. You got to light switch that, by the way. I, I can't really push button that. I guess, yeah, actually, you can push button that. You can push button that really nicely. I've just never really tried it. You've got your um, spidey flip. <laughs> That's pathetic. 
That was also pathetic. It's hard to do from this angle. Yeah, Spidey flip. Your fuller hole opening with your thumb. You can do a drop open like this. He can, uh, yeah, he can be nice and creative. You can, let's see, let's try the reverse opening. Well, that's hard to do from this angle. And my hands are sweaty. But yeah, just like that. Pretty tactile knife. I'd say it's pretty good in the piercing abilities there. It's not too, uh, too thick behind the edge. I've used this for slicing fairly, fairly well. It's kind of on the dull side right now, so I'm not going to cut any paper with it right now. I don't want to embarrass myself. Like I said, I sharpened this, and I'm not really that great at it. I'm learning. But um, a little bit of a pocket pecker there. I carry this in my back pocket as my secondary knife, so I haven't carried it front pocket. I don't really have an issue with that. So, uh, yeah, that might jab you a little bit, or whatever you got in your, your pocket there. That's, 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 it's going to scratch it. It's going to, you know, oh, maybe not. I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to get a little bit nitpicky with this knife. The ergonomics kind of frustrate me a little bit because I feel like that they're trying to force my hand into a position and I hate that with knives. Like, I absolutely, I can't stand it. I don't know what it is, but like, if I put my hand in there and I'm going to do fine work and grip up on this bad boy, I have an incredible hot spot right in here where that nice little jibby jabby is. So, I can move my hand back. Or I can try to, you know, move it forward a little bit. Choke up on it even, I guess. That feels a bit more comfortable, but even still, there's a mad hot spot on the pinky. So maybe it's just my hands. Maybe you need bigger hands. I don't know. I've got some fair-sized hands. I don't, like, they're not huge, but they're, I don't have tiny hands, I don't think. So, yeah, that's, that's my one nitpick of this knife. Really can't think of too many other downfalls. Of it. I've uh, been carrying it for probably about four months now since I got it. And I, I, I like it. It's a good work knife. Like I say, it's... I wouldn't call it necessarily a budget knife. But I'd call it budget-friendly. Like, you're not going to spend an arm and a leg on this knife, but you're getting what you pay for. You're getting D-tool tool steel, which... Pretty good edge retention. Fairly susceptible to rust, but I don't live in a... Uh, tropical climate with a lot of... Uh, salt water around and stuff like that so I don't have to particularly worry about that as much so I, I've I haven't had any issues with rust on this knife since I got it and I've oiled it I think once in rem oil and yeah it's it's fine a little dirty on the inside but yeah as you can see the inside of the uh, stainless steel scales are milled out there with some circles yeah I'm getting a little bit better at uh, doing the quality of my videos here figuring out a little <laughs> things but yeah so rundown of this knife um i recommend it as a work knife as uh, an addition to your edc or a camp knife so uh, if you like the video like thumbs up and subscribe take care